Hello. Um, this morning or today, um, I have the privilege and honor to talk to Carolina. Hi. Oh, hi, Emily. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. And let people know where you're at. Uh, so I am currently in Warsaw, Poland. Poland. I love that. Um, and I would love for you to share with my viewers your story because it is just absolutely amazing. And I know that it's probably a little bit different than the typical culture that you're you're experiencing. So go ahead and tell us your story. Yeah, it definitely is different. Um, so I would say it's different from like the usual, but it's also different from the typical carnival story. Um, so it all started in 2018 when I was prescribed the birth control pill. And after I was prescribed that pill, I was in chronic pain. So I had chronic migraines and I also went suicidal. And it was so gradual that I didn't realize and nobody actually realized that it was the birth control pill that was causing it. So I went on a lot of painkillers and I was taking painkillers probably for like two years every single day. And um, I think that destroyed my microbiome. So when I stopped taking um, the birth control pill, then the migraines stayed. So I kept on having, you know, maybe 10 migraines a month, but then it went up to 30, I think because of the painkillers that I was taking. And um, I started going to the hospital on a regular basis because nothing was helping for my pain. And you're and so that, young. Like, how old were you when, when this was happening? I was happening? 23. That's ridiculous. 23, 23. Yeah. To, like, be that often in the hospital. So I'm I sorry. Know. Go ahead. No, that's okay. And yeah, in the hospital, they were just, you know, thinking I was a hysteric. But to be honest, I think I am pretty sure, actually, that I was dying because my brain did feel like it was dying. I developed medication overuse headache. And this is some of the worst like suffering that I've ever been through is that pain. And um, yeah, and so I decided um, when I was going in and out of the hospital and I was on drugs and I tried all of the drugs available on the market and none of them worked and some, some of them had worse side effects than others, but none of them worked. And at some point I ended, I tried to taper on all of the pain meds and I was taking this injection that was a CGRP monoclonal antibody that I was taking for migraines. And it was giving me a little bit of a relief, but I ended up at the hospital again and they were so rude to me at that hospital as well. They said, you know, why do I keep on bothering them? Why, why do I keep on coming? And at that point I, I just had enough. And I decided that I was going to do whatever it takes to get better. And I wasn't getting any help from the medical system. I was only getting worse. So I decided to try the carnival diet. I heard about it from Jordan and Michaela Peterson. Um, and uh, I decided, you know, I've got nothing to lose. So and it, that's, that's pretty funny because um, most people, I feel like they research this diet a lot before they begin. You know, they make sure everything is going to be all right. So I watched two podcasts <laughs> and and I was just like okay I think my cholesterol is going to be okay so let me just let me just start it and we're gonna see what happens so yeah that was the beginning of a four-year journey wow and so whenever you started it was for the migraines it was for migraines, yes, but I did have some problems after I started as well. Okay, tell me a little bit about that. Okay, so I was on the carnivore diet and um, the improvements were from day one, literally. What? Um, yes. <laughs> wow. So what were you eating before? So before I was, I went through a couple of diets, to be honest. Uh, I was on a standard diet. Then I realized that sugar was actually triggering migraines. So I went off of sugar. And then um, the, just foods kept on bothering me. So I was discovering new foods that were bothering me, like alcohol, for example. So wine, beer, then like coffee, tea, chocolate. And then I was like, okay, all of that has to go out. Then I became really sensitive to sugar. So I couldn't do like fruit. I couldn't do most vegetables because of the glycemic index so I was just on like fish and meat and yeah vegetables that was basically it 
Um, and then when I went on the birth control pill, so that was actually before the birth control pill, when I went on the birth control pill, it stopped working. So I just went on a standard diet because I was just like, okay, I'm in pain anyway, all the time. Why would I stick to a diet? And then I went carnivore and the improvement was literally from day one. I had a migraine developing. It was that rebound headache from medication and it didn't happen. And it never happened in my life that that headache wouldn't develop. So I was just like, okay, I think I'm just going to stick to it. So I bought a lot of meat. Um, and then I tried to, you know, I wasn't very fond of that diet. It's so restri restrictive. So I wanted to reintroduce foods, but it, you know, it never worked. And what happened was I was still on the medication for my migraines. And I wasn't sure because after like three months, my migraines went down from like 30 a month to like one a month. I basically didn't have migraines anymore. And I was going to a doctor and um, that doctor, you know, she didn't really believe me. And also so it made me not believe myself, which is crazy, right? It's like I believed a doctor more than I believed myself, actually. Um, and I kept on being on those medications because I was like, maybe they helped me in some way. And then I developed, I had side effects of those drugs. So I had light sensitivity and I started having this trigeminal nerve pain. Uh, in my eye and it was causing a very strong light sensitivity so then I went to a neurologist and I said listen this is happening this is extremely unpleasant I think it's the medications that are causing it and she went that's impossible but she switched my drugs to another one and I had one injection of that drug around like two and a half to three years ago and well it just it put me in bed for like a year so I was in bed for, yeah, I was in bed for one year blindfolded because I could not tolerate light at all. So I was, I was in the darkness for one year. I was living in London. I lost my job. I lost most of my friends. I basically lost everything. Also like the relationship with my family got kind of sour. I don't know why that happened, but that did happen as well. So I basically lost everything after one single injection of that drug. And I went back to that doctor and, you know, wearing a face mask in with a cane, actually, because then my parents had to guide me. So I lived like a blind person for like a year or two, approximately, because I, I couldn't, I wasn't autonomous afterwards. And um, I went back to that neurologist and I said to her, listen, this happened. And this was right after the injection. And then she said, no, that's impossible. And I, I don't actually want to say this because I feel like this is so embarrassing for her. But she said that I was depressed and that this is depression. And I just went, OK, I, I, I think I, I am done, you know, with the medical system. She was actually the only doctor who believed me a little bit. So I was, you know, pretty disappointed as well, but um, I just didn't go back to her and I said, I, and I thought, you know, I'm on my own. Um, oh, and she told me that I was going to be like this forever. She just said, this is how you are now. That's it. Um, and so I went out of that appointment and I was like, okay, I'm on my own. I don't believe her. I don't believe that this is not reversible but I'm on my own. And I kept on being on the carnival diet. And after a couple of months, uh, this is pretty long, but after a couple of months, I read a science paper about people who were on this drug and experienced similar side effects of that medication. And I learned that what I most likely had was Suzak syndrome. So this is a very serious autoimmune illness. Um, it can cause blindness, deafness, or death actually in people who have it. And they say that uh, people need to go on literally aggressive doses of steroids to prevent, you know, the side effects of that. So I found out about this when I was like 50% recovered already. And I'm so glad that I did because I would have probably gone on steroids if I knew that before. Um, and it seems like, and this is just unthinkable for me, but I think it's the diet that prevented me from having, you know, long-term consequences of this, because this is the only explanation that I can think of, you know? Um, so that happened. And afterwards I was recovering from that and I was, you know, feeling better and better. And then I was living in my parents' house and it had mold in it. So then I developed SARS. 
Um, Ow. So, yeah. So I went bad again. And then it took me a while to figure out why I got so bad again. And it was a little bit different because it was mostly, you know, brain fog and like, I would be in chronic pain as well. So the migraines were back, but I would also get lost, <laughs> like going from the bathroom to the, to my room. I didn't know like which way to turn, you know, the like, <laughs> brain fog was so bad. So I was like, okay, this is not Susa because it was not that bad before. Um, and so I, I figured it out eventually, thanks to Instagram. Um, and then, but then I got properly diagnosed. You know, I went to the US, I had all of the blood tests, the gene tests, everything. And I got properly diagnosed with that. And then, so then I went back to Poland and, you know, I felt better living out of mold. And then for whatever reason, I also developed hemolytic anemia. Um, and so, uh, and still nobody really knows why, but my folic acid went down at some point. And because of that, my hemoglobin went, went down. So I ended up at the hospital with 4.5 level of hemoglobin. And well, I, I nearly died. Yeah. So, um, so that's, that's the last kind of traumatic event that I had. This one actually did cause some PTSD. Um, but yeah, so so this is this is basically my story. My blood is okay now and I am doing better. Actually, I have been feeling the past like two or three weeks, I have actually been feeling pretty good for the first time in years. But yes, the past couple of years have been difficult for me. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. And the the determination and the tenacity that you had to have to keep going because most people would have just laid down and took it at any one of those points. And you had like four or five, like yeah. literally near death experiences to be in bed for a year to, to, you know, have to cover your eyes for this incredible pain. And then to be lost and not even be able to go from your bedroom to the bathroom. Like, many, many people would have just been like, all right, I'm done. Like I'm done. But what came over you each time to bring you this tenacity to just keep trying? Mm -hmm. So I think it looks like I am strong. I don't think I'm that strong, to be honest. <laughs> I think there is two things. So one of them is Jordan Peterson. And he has this one rule that goes something like focus as much as you can on one thing and see what happens and I think this is something that I apply in my life just everywhere so and also you know like not comparing myself to who to 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 other people and because I was also thinking about this because there is this rule by Peterson as well that goes you know like don't compare yourself to other people something like this uh, or compare yourself to who you were yesterday and then I go okay like yesterday I was healthy and today I am not so you know that's not helpful but then I realized okay like today is kind of where I begin and then tomorrow I can compare myself sort of to yesterday but like that event I just need to accept that it happened and this is the reality um, and then taking it one day at a time. So not thinking, you know, 10 months into the future, but just really focusing on here and now. And like I said, you know, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure if this is strength, but I think I have this kind of ability to like accept reality and that something happened and just think of the next step. Yeah. And, um, you know, I would think um, in that practice of just focusing on the now that you can almost get a different um, perspective or even perception of reality in, in that you're able to say, okay, here is where I'm at. What can I learn? What can I learn from this experience? And to literally, and I know this is super hard, but what I see in you and what I hear in what you're saying is that you realize that each of these steps was actually a gift. It was actually an opportunity for you to learn because now I see what you're doing with all of it. 
Now I see your YouTube channel. I see you sharing your story and sharing the story of other people who have had interesting stories like this. So for, for what I'm seeing in you is that you have taken this horrible situation and, and just made it for your good. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest, I'm not sure if I would go that far. So I wasn't because you speak about sort of gratitude, right? So the learning experience, what can I learn from here? I know that I probably learned a lot from from all of that. And I am grateful for that. However, I think I'm not sure if I had that attitude from the beginning. It's just something, an obstacle that I had to deal with. And that's it. So it was more like a duty than something that I was like, you know, it's going to be great in the end. No, I didn't think that, especially, you know, with PTSD, when the last experience that I had, no, there was definitely no gratitude there. And I did even have that thought at some point that suffering to some degree, you know, it makes you more, we say that in Polish, it makes you more noble. It makes you kind of a more profound person, somebody who's, I don't know, more worthy or something like this. But then I was thinking, does that like, is there is there a degree of suffering where this just stops happening? I mean, you know, like the minimizing returns and something. <laughs> does it just does it just keep on making you a more valuable and valuable person, or does it stop at some point and it's just pure suffering? I don't have an answer to that, but I was thinking about it. Yeah, absolutely, and. I mean, I, I can understand and I can totally respect that you weren't in that mind frame of gratefulness yeah. at those points, but the proof is in the pudding. Like you survived, like you chose every day to continue to live and to continue to get yourself to this point. And that, that to me is proof that you were in that um, almost like a curiosity, like, let's see if I can yeah. go another day. <laughs> oh, yes, that was definitely cur- that was definitely that just like, let's see what happens. I'm gonna do my best. And let's see, right? Yeah, well, that's amazing. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that you are feeling good now these past few weeks. Um, yeah. And that you are clear and that you're able able to, you know, even function enough to be able to even have this interview. Like that's a miracle. Yeah, It's a miracle hearing your story and knowing all that you've been through that you're even able to schedule this appointment, that you're able to be here on zoom. You're able to have this conversation. Mm-hmm. So what are you, what are you eating now? Like on a regular basis? Okay. So I am still very strict. I'm on the lion diet and I basically never cheat, never, ever. Um, It's not worth it. (laughs) No, it's completely not worth it. And I just think of the pain. Um, So I eat um, steaks, so ribeyes, a lot of ribeyes. I eat lamb chops. Uh, I eat minced veal and lamb steaks and uh, also lamb chunks in a broth. So (laughs) that's basically that. That's my whole diet. I, I did try an that. oyster yesterday, though. Oh, did you like it? No, it didn't feel very well on my stomach. And I just took like half a teaspoon of it. So I don't know if they're going to stay or go. I'm, I'm going to try because I'm basically zinc deficient right now. So going to see. They are a great source of zinc. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but and and I think that it is safe to try, like you said, like other things yeah. like oyster and everything. But it also is sometimes like a PTSD response for me in that I just enjoy feeling good so much. And I'm just like, can we just stay here for a minute? Like, can I just enjoy peace? Can I just enjoy mental clarity? Can I just enjoy not being in pain? Yeah, 100%. The trying different foods is just nerve wracking. I was trying it yesterday and uh, I mean, I just, at the beginning, I just licked that oyster. Like that's all I did. Cause I was just like, I don't even want to swallow this thing. Uh, and then I tried like half a teaspoon. It's just not worth it. If it's going to cause pain or like, I don't know, maybe I have some hidden allergy to oysters or something. So, yeah. 
Yeah. You just never know. So, um, I wanted to, sh to share my screen really quick, um, and show everybody your YouTube channel. Um, so, um, we, we obviously, we did, a, mm -hmm. a an interview, but you have many other people that you, um, either have interviewed or that you're lined up to interview and then yeah. you share more your coming. story. <laughs> yes. More coming for sure. So, um, if anybody, um, is watching this, then I will definitely put it in the link, uh, in the show notes, but, yeah. um, I, I love that you have turned your tragedy into sharing this for other people. So what has your experience been like for that, sharing this with other people? Okay, so I share mostly on TikTok and on Instagram. So YouTube is like the third thing, I would say. Um, and on TikTok, actually, so I am based in Poland and my videos are only shown to people in Poland. So that everything is entirely in Polish there. And the responses have been quite, I mean, to some degree, it's quite funny because the responses have been, um, so for example, I, I had a video about my diet and I just think, you know, it's the most boring diet that you could possibly be on because it's like the same thing three times a day. And then that gets like half a million views <laughs> and I just find it incredible. So uh, my following on TikTok actually grew like, really quickly so in three months of sharing I would say it's like at 14,000 right now I think so that's quite big um, but I had a lot of negative comments so some of them you know because I have PTSD so sometimes if somebody stresses me out and it's not even related to my trauma like it's still going to trigger that PTSD so that has been difficult so I had to you know not read comments but I noticed that, you know, at the beginning, TikTok just shows my video to everybody. And right now I have those like a couple of thousand people who follow me and they started responding to those hate comments. So I don't even have to respond. But people who actually hear me and understand me started to kind of defend me in those comments. And there is people who believe me. There is people who I helped already, which is insane. So some people already message me, you know, with feedback, like, I, I feel so much better. I lost this amount of weight, things like that. So that is really just, you know, incredible to do that. And I started making live videos um, as well. So I have an opportunity to talk to people who follow me as well. And the responses are really positive there. And I get messages. So I feel like, you know, it has been gradual. At the beginning, it was just like, this is insane. And people sending me all of those vomit emojis as well, because I eat only there's so many. Uh, but uh, right now, I feel like it's changing. And more and more people are starting to understand where I'm coming from, what I'm doing, and that there is actually some truth to it. I think it actually happened much quicker on TikTok than it did with like in my personal life when I was on that diet. Yeah, absolutely. And well, and I think it's so important, at least it was for me yeah. to share my story because even whenever I came out of all the pain and the suffering, I knew that there were people that were still in that. And so I knew that I had to share my message and share my story yeah. to even help one person. So what was that like whenever you got that message or multiple messages that you've helped other people? Yeah, I'm I'm proud of them. I am proud of them. But also, so I am a little bit selfish and all of that. I'm not gonna lie to you, Emily. I feel like you're very altruistic and you're doing it, you know, for the good of the other people. I feel like I am so weird. And the more there is people like me, the less weird I become. So that's one of the reasons why I'm actually doing it. Because the more people are like, okay, carnival diet is healthy, then they're not going to be like, oh, Carolina, that weirdo, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, for like, honestly, for Poland, um, what is the culture like? I mean, do, do they, are they vegetarian? Are they just the standard diet? Are they, uh, what is it like? 
Well, I think it's healthier than the U.S. Definitely, there is yeah. less obesity, less processed food, and the portions are smaller. But I would say that I mean I don't I don't know because for me like everything is just the same now when I just look at what other people eat. So I think it's kind of the standard diet. So a lot of like bread and a lot of grains, uh, some processed food like candy. You know they eat this kind of stuff. A lot of people are vegan or vegetarian now. Um, and, but some people still stick to, you know, the like classical Polish diet, which is just like pork and sausages and like potatoes, stuff like that, like a lot of bread and butter. So it's a mixture of like grains and animal foods, I I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, do you eat out? Do you eat at home mostly? Mm, mostly at home. Sometimes I eat out in restaurants. It's difficult because there isn't a lot of steakhouses. Um, so yeah, I have to go there and they always use those oils, which I, I just don't understand because those steaks are so fat already. Why would you use an oil? But they do. So I always have to tell them. Sometimes I need to just, you know, persuade them a little bit not to use that oil. Um, and yeah, apart from that, mostly at home. And I just think it's, you know, it's just so much easier just to cook for myself when I have all of those uh, problems. Yeah, absolutely. And um, as far as, you know, your journey um, has, I, I, and I'm just assuming, I don't know, yeah. um, but has this been a, uh, I'm, I'm assuming like a spiritual journey for you to have endured such intense pain and suffering in the human yeah. form mm -hmm. it definitely has been so this is something that i'm still kind of trying to figure out where i stand spiritually um but yeah so especially this last experience so i felt definitely that i need god in my life um throughout that time i had a very mixed relationship with you know the high power god however you want to call it because um, I was really scared because I was just like, look what God did to me already. And it's like, what else can happen? What else can he do to me? And I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified of it. And then when I nearly died, when I ended up um, in the hospital with, you know, 4.5 hemoglobin and I had hours to live, then it was just the ultimate proof. So even I think there is an interview with Carl Jung where he says, you know, people, somebody asks him, do you believe in God? And he goes, oh, that's a difficult question. If I believe, I know that God exists. And I think this is where I am right now, because after everything that happened, especially after all of that trauma and after putting so much effort into getting better, you know, it was, it was just tremendous effort. And then just realizing that God can take it away from me in a second and everything I worked for, you know, it's just going to be gone. So I think ultimately that was the thing that, yeah, that, that just brought me co closer to God. But I am still working on that relationship. I still haven't figured it out. I still don't know which way I'm going. Yeah, I think, and I think it's so important for all of us to be honest and to say, we don't know, like we're still navigating this. We haven't got it all figured out. Um, and going forward, um, is there anything else that you would want someone to know who experienced, um, some of the suffering that you did? Like if they're listening to this right now and they're just like, oh my gosh, I can relate to her story. Is there anything that you would you would say to them? I think it's mostly what you said. So just I wouldn't say I'm really not at that stage of gratitude yet. And I think it is incredibly difficult to go through something like I have gone through. But one thing is just take it with some level of curiosity. Mm. So everything that is happening to you, you know, just yeah just take it with curiosity see what happens and do your best so this is one thing um some other reflections that i have is um i think you're not doing it for yourself that's one thing so and this one is 
a pretty difficult reflection. But I think that, you know, people who they're sick and they're not really trying, I, I kind of consider them a little bit selfish at this point. Because, you know, when you're sick, and especially like when I was disabled, I think it affected every single person around me. So like my parents, my brother, you know, my friends. And in a way, I think when you're recovering, you're also doing it for them. Um, so yeah, I, th I think those two things. I love that. I love that. And, and it's, it's so beautiful to recognize and realize that the reason that we keep fighting is not for ourselves. It's for everyone else around us. Um, yeah. and, um, I, I can't thank you enough, Carolina, for, for having this conversation with me, for sharing your story, um, on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, um, because I know that you are changing the world. Um, and, um, I just wanted to thank you. Thank you so much for enduring all that suffering and for living through it to tell the story. All right. Thank you very much, Emily. Thank you for having me and for giving me the chance to speak about all of this stuff. Absolutely. And I would love to do an update video um, and see where you're at in a year. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.